Uh, welcome to today's show uh, with Mo Hustlers. I went on show 23 with Mai, right? Um, Mai's a massage. What do you what do you call yourself? Like massage therapist. Massage massage therapist. Okay, great. And she's out of based out of uh, North Carolina and Charlotte, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So welcome to the show. I uh, appreciate you coming on. Uh, you know, like like I said, the show is about you know entrepreneurship, you know, and how to make money. You know, and mostly we talk about like the three things about money, which is how to make money, how to save money, and how to multiply money. But I wanted to bring you on the show because this, this show is is about entrepreneurship too. And and I wanted to talk about how you're dealing with this pandemic thing too. So that's kind of uh, cause I know you and I have been talking, you know, offline on how we're like, how we're doing our loans. Cause you know, I, I, me as a landlord, I'm, I'm doing, I'm applying for this, you know, uh, loan and I want, you know, you to kind of give us your story. So maybe your story can help other, you know, home businesses as well. So, uh, we can talk about that first and then, and then we can kind of go into your business, uh, afterwards. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, yeah. So, uh, so you as a business, right? I mean, how many employees did you have? Um, I only currently have five. Five. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I think you, you, you applied for which type of loan? Uh, I applied for the idol. Idol. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so those of you guys know, I mean, you as a business, you had the option to apply, um, for these particular loans to help assist you during this pandemic. Uh, so there's two two type of loan, which is the IDO, which is uh, I forgot what's called the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, right? Is that right? Yeah. And the PPP, I forgot, Paycheck Protection Plan or something like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but right now, I mean, you and I applied for the IDO loan, which we're just going to abbreviate to be the IDO loan. Um, reason why I applied for it because you know I don't qualify for that PPP because. Um, uh, my CPA says you don't qualify for that one. So that's why I apply for it. And then I think you're, you're kind of the same situation. Is that right? As yeah. Business? Okay. So, mm -hmm. so do you remember when you applied for it? Uh, yes, I applied for it, um, uh, March 27th. Wow. So you were one of the, f like few people that did it way like during the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did you, did you get to the, the streamline, uh, portal or did you have to apply through like some sort of document and then submit it? Um, the first week when I went in, it was the document, then you send it in. So I was like, oh, they're asking too much questions. And, you know, let me, let me go ahead and wait. And then I talked to my sister-in-law, yeah. uh, which they own the laundromats. And she was like, oh no, yeah, just, um, just apply for the other one that, you know, you, you're going to need because they just po posted a new document. So that's when I went to go look at the same uh, link and they posted something different. So okay. Like, oh, okay. Um, this one's, you know, it, it wasn't the PPP, but it was the IDO. And I was like, okay, you know, let me try to do this. Yeah. It, it's a, yeah. it's a long wait. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so, uh, so what happened originally was they were taking, uh, you had to download a document and you had to fill that out and you had to upload it. That was like during the beginning. And then they changed it. So I think what what your would you say your who was it that 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 helped you? Uh, my sister in law. Your sister in law said go back and apply, and that's when they changed it to make it easier, where you can just apply right online and oh. just hit you know a couple pages. I think it was like five pages or so, or like four pages. Yeah. And then you just fill the information in and you submit it, so you don't have to like print it out and upload it because it was maybe it might have been too much of a headache for them. So that's kind of, uh, so you did that. And then that was back in March, you know, and then oh, did you hear anything? Did you get, you know, I, I didn't hear anything. And out of the blue on April 18th, they yeah. got my credit. So you know how Experian and all the uh, credit wise, all of a sudden they're like, alert me, like something, you know, somebody pulled your credit. Yeah. So like looking like, oh, you know, they, teach, uh, they haven't sent me an email. Uh -huh. But they pulled up my credit, so that's when I got in touch with you. Yeah, um, did they did. You know, did they do that to you too? Because all of a sudden, mine's yeah. pulled. So yeah, so it it did take like for me, it was take take like a little bit 
uh, around like a month or so. Somewhere in that time range, I have to go back and look at my time frame. Mm-hmm. But it did take about that 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 much time for them to respond back. So those of you guys who applied uh, for the idol, when we're only talking about the idol right now, it does take a while, like almost a month, right? In about a month to get some sort of notification, right? Even an email. Um, I think it took me like three weeks to get an email to say, hey, yeah, we got something, right? And mm-hmm. then that fourth week or so, that's when I got my credit hit, just like uh, just like you did. Um, I was told, like, I mean, I didn't know how to check my credit <laughs> because I was using, like, Credit Karma, you mm-hmm. know? So I don't know if you guys know what Credit Karma is. They, you know, they, it's another agency. It's free. Uh, it checks, it, it monitors your credit, too. But um, I didn't see uh, a credit notification through there. So I was like, oh, something is wrong. So I'm like, and then I started looking at some YouTube stuff, and then they said they were seeing it through Experion, you know? So if you want to, to track this, go to Experion's website and then subscribe. It's free. You don't have to put your credit card in or anything like that. But they do give you like 30 days for free or something like that, right? Yeah. Is that, did you subscribe to like the full service or? Um, I only did the free trial, which is seven days free trial. And then uh, I canceled it, but they still show my credit on there. So I'm like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, me too. You're right. <laughs> I keep logging in and it lets me in. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're just letting it ride out or something. It's, uh, I think the last time I checked was like last week and it's been over a month. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you're right. I, I didn't really think about that, and I didn't. I mean, I didn't put my credit card in either. So it's not like they're charged. They're gonna find a way to charge me. So um, we got a question here. Can someone teach me how to get the numbers and flip commercial property? Uh, I'm not even sure, <laughs> Peter. That was before a different show, Peter. <laughs> so, so right. So so today we're talking about like the hustle and you know stuff, the grind of like massage um studio that uh, my my does you know out in like north carolina sh- like charlotte area but right now we're just talking about like how her business is doing with um you know how she's how she's going through it with and how she's her your, your status with your your government small business loan application right so uh so you got your email your credit hit in march uh, april right april 18th mm-hmm. right? that's what you said Yes. And then, then what happened afterwards? Like nothing, right? Nothing happened. Yep. Nothing happened. And then, um, I decided to call them about maybe a week and a half later. Yeah. And they're like, oh yeah, we're looking at it. And I was like, okay, anything else? No, nope, no, nope, we're just looking at it. And I was like, okay. So I left it like two weeks later and then I called again. Yeah. And the lady was like, yeah, you're in phase two, which is going to take a little bit longer process. Uh-huh. But, um, we'll get to you. I'm like, Hello. okay, you know, so I just waited and waited. And over the weekend, that's when, um, they sent me that email. Oh, know, Hey, you know, you can possibly qualify for this match. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, I was like, okay, I was excited. Now nah, don't get the <laughs> hope up. <laughs> and we'll go further into it. Uh, mm-hmm. so how long did it, I mean, did you, was it busy when you called them up or did you get in right away? Yeah, you get in right away. You just call them on that 866 number and then, you know, they'll tell you if you're there for a pandemic or you have a existing loan and they'll pick up right away. They'll transfer you to the right people and they'll pick up right away. So there's awesome. really no hold. Awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was afraid of that because I didn't want to like, you know, stay on hold for like hours and stuff like that. That's what I've been hearing from like YouTube videos and stuff like that. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you're saying get in, I should just call in because instead of like, you know, guessing, playing that guessing game, you know. So let's give us a pause a minute. We got my, my yeah, vein. Says, Hi, guys. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I didn't know you applied. We need to touch base. There we go. Yes, yeah, that's got- in law. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, my? So yeah, see that's what I was telling. I was telling. Uh, I was telling my that hey, you know, we need to like let other home business know that you know that you could apply for these loans, you know, and you know you should move forward. Maybe you know get some assistance because we don't know how long this this pandemic is gonna last, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And kudos to you. I mean, 
what made you jump ahead and apply? Because it took me like a month to to actually went out and apply. I mean, um, were you struggling? Were you really like, or are you just like, you're on the ball? Yeah, I, I was on the ball because I was like, you know, because um, I know how the government is. It's like they they like first come first first serve, right? And then they like to take their time. So then I'm like, uh, I used to be an interpreter for um, Hmong families that go to DSS. So I know how the the weight is. Uh, so I'm like, okay, you know, let me just jump the ball right now. So really, we didn't go into quarantine until yeah. March 22nd. Uh -huh. But I just thought about it. I'm like, okay, March 17 comes. We're about to close down. Like, they're just starting to close everything down. So around like right when they finally closed us down, well, I'm like, okay, you know, let me apply right now before the whole United States you know, <laughs> going to quarantine. So that's what I did. And you're so right because I mean, this is my first pandemic. I don't, I don't work with the government and stuff like that. Um, and, and I'm starting to realize it, it government takes forever, mm -hmm. right? Even yeah. trying to get that stimulus money, like, I mean, it had, I mean, I didn't, you had to go through the house, you know, they had to vote on it and then, well, then it has to go to like the Senate, you know, and, and then, and then Trump has to sign it. And then, and then it takes a while for the, all that money to disperse out. So anybody who got that $1,200 stimulus money, that took like, I don't know, like a month or so. Mm -hmm. It's not like, like that. So I didn't know anything about how government worked. I just thought that, Hey, you applied and you know, maybe you'll get it in the next couple of weeks, but. This kind of stuff takes work. I mean, now we're working on the second stimulus, you know, money. We're trying to get money out to people, and it's taking a lot longer, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So kudos to you, you know, that you knew ahead of time, and now you're in that stage where you got your response, right, from your loan with the with the IDA loan. And I guess, I mean, they gave you an amount, right? Yes. Okay. But then we were just talking earlier, what happened? <laughs> So, you know, they, they gave me a loan. Uh, the amount was 32 K. Okay. Uh, it's nothing really. Uh, you think about it, expenses, rent, utilities, it probably would only, uh, cover for like a month or two months, probably at two months at the most. Yeah. Um, but then today I was anxious because they, I Googled everything and it said three day turnaround. So I got it, you know, Saturday. So I was like, oh, maybe it's three business days. No, I checked it about six o'clock this evening and it says it's been denied. So, uh, yeah. So I'm like, I'm bummed out because, you know, what? yeah, my insurance basically says, oh, hey, we're not paying for you. You don't have that uh, disruption um, coverage on your insurance. So, Wait, so you're saying that the idle loan denied you? Yeah, they denied me. But how do? Wait, did you, so you went ahead and approved for that thirty-two thousand amount, right? Mm -hmm. And then what happens? They, I guess they they check your stuff. Is that what it is? Where? Um, I really don't know at the moment what they did. They just said, you know, they were sending it to underwriting. Yeah. And so they're like, give us three days, and we'll get back to you. So you know, today I checked it and. It was like basically zero. You're denied. So did they ask for any input or any info? Uh, you know, when you hit approve, yeah, I want that amount. Do they ask for any paperwork or anything like that? Um, so what they do is when they send it to you, they'll send you a loan amount. You have to look at it. They tell you how much you're applying on uh, your, your approved. Oh, I think we lost her. Okay, I think we'll give her a moment for her to come back. Uh, so, Tuesdays, Friday. So, Sai goes, we'll give her a moment. I'm gonna just message her, make sure she jumps back on. Back on. Okay, so Sai goes, Sai goes, I applied on Sunday, two days after they opened on Friday, and I was scared I would not get the loan. I did everything online. Huh, okay, Sai. Maybe you did it after the new type of feature. I don't know. So did you get your loan, side? Did you get approved? Because what she's saying is she got denied. So that's the question is see what happens with her situation here. Uh, 
Oh, Sai. So Sai. So basically, Sai saying that Sai. Um, I think Sai, your loan is probably different because uh, you're saying you're doing it through the banks. If you're doing it through the bank, you're going through the PPP, uh, the Paycheck Protection uh, Loan. So uh, that's a little different from what she's doing. She's she's just applying. Okay, so Sai just said he got he got his loan. So okay, cool. Um, all right, so good for you here. So let me go ahead and pop her back in. Three, two, one. All right, so you're back in. Sorry about that. It was um, we're having, I guess, a tornado warning. So, oh my gosh! Yes, <laughs> I think it's coming your way, probably. So, I mean, is it rainy outside right now, or? Yeah, it's been uh, it's it's been raining cats and dogs uh, since about seven o'clock. So. If you need to duck for cover, don't worry about this show. <laughs> <laughs> Stay alive. Stay alive. We want to see what happens. Um, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, if you need if you need to stay, uh, go for cover, you know, just go, you know. So yeah. um so yeah, you guys uh got, those of you guys just joined, we got Mai from uh North Carolina. Um she does a massage studio up in Charlotte area. Uh we're gonna talk a little about what she does and, and how that business works, but right now we're only talking about uh how she's dealing with the pandemic, how she's getting the loan to, to you know, help her move forward or stay alive. Um, if you guys got any questions, comment below, but do let us know where you guys are at. You know, we just, we'd like to know where our viewers are. So if you guys are in Wisconsin, uh, North Carolina, we haven't seen a North Carolina person here. If you're in North Carolina, give us a shout out, you know, no. so we say, Hey, you know, um, that you're, Buddy Mai is on the show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay, so so you so we just we just got talking got done talking about her loan. It's so you got denied. So was there any reason why they they said that? Mm -hmm. No, they they haven't sent me an email yet. Uh, I actually called them right when I got the um the you know when right when I checked the status. So I called and she's like, you should be receiving an email soon and you have 90 days to. Uh... Oh, we lost her again. I mean, that tornado must be hitting her hard or that rain. But uh, so we got Linda. Hey, Linda. Yay from North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina. Linda, are you from North Carolina as well? Uh, we got. Man, I can never even say your name, <laughs> buddy. I'm so sorry. I'll keep butchering your name here. Uh, Twin Cities, man. Lee. I'll just call you Lee, bro. <laughs> so, um, man, I mean, I am, I, I feel bad that she applied for her loan and then got denied. And it's only 32,000. I mean, with my, I mean, with my particular business, I mean, I'm losing like 20, 20 K per month. So, uh, she just popped on. Let me just go ahead and give her back in. And you are back in, Mai. Okay. Oh, no worries. We know that you're <laughs> you're fighting this tornado. <laughs> I mean, it's not that bad. You know, Charlotte, we, we get all these weird weathers. So, you know, I'm surprised. That's okay. That's okay. I mean, uh, we know Wisconsin's, keep, you know, it's crazy up there right now, too. So, uh, all that rain. But we need that rain. So, um. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Sai just goes. I'm not even gonna comment what you Sai you said there, but okay. So sorry you got denied. Hopefully you can f respond back and say, hey, you know, maybe fight it back and try to get something, uh, them to approve it. But uh, keep us in touch. You know, keep well, keep me in touch, and you know, uh, or if you guys want to keep in touch on how she she goes, you know, I'll tag her. Um, her Facebook profile and you guys can add her as a friend, you know, she's an entrepreneur, you know, um, as a friend, you know, get to know each other, network with guys, uh, network guys with her, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you take care of it. All right. So, but, uh, let's move on. Let's move on to the, to what, what you do is how did you get started with being a mas massage studio type of job, you know? Um, well, I started back in 2011 as a receptionist and, um, at first, you know, uh, I was kind of iffy about it because I was like, 
my boss was like, you know, do you want to go to school for it? Because I, I was working for her for like six months or so. And then she was like, you know, we're short on staff. If you want to go to school, then, you know, you can do part time for me and go to school. So I'm like, you know, let me try it because um, I I've gone to college for so long. But yeah. I tell you this, that my mind is um, to the point where, you know, I have I have a whole I have a, a family. So it's harder um, when you have your you know, you have kids and you have in-laws and you're all over the place and you can't finish school because you know you have you have priorities yeah so when i was a receptionist i was like okay you know um let me just go ahead and go to school so i went to school for six months at southeastern yeah and um i got my license and then 2012 is when i became a, a you know a therapist i graduated got my license and i worked for her for a long time but then yeah I, I worked for her from like 2012 to 2014 mm -hmm. and then my husband got sick so i got out of it mm. and I was telling him i was like you know i don't want to work for her no more like i want to do myself yeah i was like you you have your own time i remember when i was working for her we was very short-handed so basically i worked seven days a week almost eight hours to ten hours a day Wow. So really in the real massage world, if you work at Massage Envy, of course, yeah. Um, you would get like you're supposed to only get four clients, but for mm -hmm. us being shorthanded, I would do I'm a deep tissues uh reception I'm I'm a deep tissue massage therapist. Yeah. So she would book me back to back to back like 90 minutes on deep tissue. Okay. Oh, you you know, once you're doing that, you get warned out because then yeah. um, a lot of people they come in, they're like, oh, you know, I'd rather have deep tissue. You know, you're you're not they're not there for relaxation. They're like, okay, you know, I really need my muscles worked on. Yeah. Oh, so I told her I was like, you know, I can't do um, too many hours, and she's like, no, it's okay. You can have your your day off, and when I'm off, she's like, my, I need you to come in. <laughs> like, oh my god i'm never gonna have a day off and yeah you know, i just decided to go off by myself when i started by myself it was just me um taking you know doing appointments here and there and then i told my husband i was like you know i think i'm ready to open up one and i had a lot of colleagues who went to school with me so mm -hmm. that's what i did i op uh when i opened up one i just called a few of my my colleagues, I'm like, hey, you know, you guys need a place to work. And they're like, yeah, we could pick up a side job. Yeah. Um, that's what we did. And, you know, I've been doing it since 2015. So roughly a little bit over five years now. But, wow. Um, awesome. Yeah. So you went, you got past that mark where, you know, you became a successful business. Uh, you know, most businesses don't last that long, you know, after the first year. But congrats to you. So, so six months, this would get, I mean, I don't even know that what it takes to be a, a a massage therapist is that what you mm -hmm. guys call it yourself mm -hmm. is it i mean is it like when you go to there are you learning how to massage people or are you like or is all like tests that you're taking um that's the best part about it um being a massage therapist the first module the first month basically yeah. you're learning everything in the book from bones to muscles we're basically yeah. learning everything a doctor would know Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, through like veins, muscles, tissues, everything. So we have to know all that, you know, okay. um, patients that can't get them and patients that can't get them. Uh, and then the second module all the way to the sixth module, basically every single day we had a massage because we had to <laughs> learn. We had to learn every single um, yeah type of different techniques there was. Uh huh. So, yeah. So every day I had a massage from Monday to Friday. And that was the best, that was the best thing ever, <laughs> dude. I'll come to class for that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the school class I would come. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so yeah, if you guys are watching this, if you guys have any questions about you know massage, starting your own massage studio, <laughs> you know, comment below, you know, or let us know where you guys are, are from. We would love to hear where you guys are from. Uh, so okay, great. So, man. So just just curious, like you're saying, deep tissue is like that's is that the hardest out of because I 
I don't get that much massages. So usually when I go in, I say, hey, give me a deep tissue. That's the only thing I know, you know? Yeah. Deep tissue is, um, it, it depends on who you go, who you get, okay? So some people, they do deep tissue where they're slowly firming up on you. And like, it depends on how they, they know how to stance themselves. So with deep tissue, it's not your body weight on there. It's your legs that are giving you the um, strength to do deep tissue. A lot of people don't understand that because they think that, you know, you got to push down, but really your legs, yeah. your legs are the supporting part to make sure that you're doing the deep tissue part. So give me a tip because, because when I go get, I mean, this is a long time ago when I went to get a massage and it was like a skinny young, <laughs> You know, for a deep tissue, is that, is that still, can you still get it? I mean, she, it felt like she was just like rubbing my skin. G give us a tip when you look at a particular, like, I guess, massage therapist. Do you want a heavy set person or do you want like, is it, is it based on skill? I mean, how do you pick your a best massage therapist? I guess that's, um, that's, that's kind of what I'm asking for. It's, it's based on skills. Um, okay. It's, it, it don't matter how skinny they are. It don't matter how overweight they are. Sometimes some, some of them are big like me. Yeah. And their pressure is light as a feather. Okay. Because they don't, they don't know how to uh, stand that stance. Okay. Um, you know how uh, Jackie Chan would say, you know, do your stance, your Kung Fu stance, and you have to stand, sit like, uh, stand like that. But basically, that's what we do. So when we're massaging, <laughs> we're in that Kung Fu style. And <laughs> It's just like Tai Chi. <laughs> wow, that's funny. Now I can't. If I were, <laughs> if I was to ever lay on the bed, I'm gonna check your stance. <laughs> you got a little Wing Chun stance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. Awesome. And um, you know, the best thing about it is that uh, someone who would know um what they're doing, because some yeah. people they they they're book smart. So they, you can pass massage therapy if you're book smart, you yeah. know, um, cause they don't do what nail techs do. Nail techs, you have to go by the, you have to take the test and you have to do a, uh, I guess you have to perform a nail, something on a nail uh, on the hand, right? Uh -huh. But yeah. for massage therapy, you don't have to do that. You basically okay. just take the written test to pass it. So oh. if you're book smart, and yeah. you know how to do it then you pass your test you get your license okay mm -hmm. is it one of those licenses that you have to renew all the time or yes we renew every two years uh we also do take courses um ce courses uh every okay. two years so gotcha yeah and so so we were talking about your your deep your deep tissue thing you know but do you come home sore or is it like after couple years you're like you're already like strong that you don't feel it no more because um, I, I do my I'm, i massage my wife and i get sweaty and i get sore <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no you uh you actually don't because a lot of people's like oh you know you do deep tissues uh you know back to back do you get tired you don't get tired unless you know you're using your body the wrong way you know unless if you're uh, a lot of people, they don't know how to stand and they'll yeah. louch on the side like you're carrying a baby and then that will start hurting your, yeah. Oh, okay, I see. start hurting your hips and your, uh, depends on how you use your hands. I don't use my hands. I use my elbows and my forearm okay. because yeah. um, I think that's where the most pressure can be. And it, it's a big difference, you know, what? I do agree. When I first started, I was like using my hands and they're like, nope, you're going to wear out your hands, your thumb, especially your thumb, you're right. wear out. So they teach you how to use your, basically your arm, your legs, everything to help, you know, with the deep tissue. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, just any, any massage, right? Not even deep tissue. I mean, it's just, you don't, I mean, the first few months when you first start, did you, were you ever sore or was it? Was it you? Is it just like what you said? Just your stance or the way how you do it? Um, I think it's just the way you do it because when you're there, they teach you. They basically make sure uh, that you're on you're on top of it. 
you know, they, they make sure that your stance is correct and they watch you. I'm like, gotcha. Watch you like a hawk. <laughs> So I guess I'm doing it wrong when I massage my wife because I'm always sore. <laughs> a lot of people, they're like, oh, just massage on the bed like when they come over. And they're like, nah, just massage me on the yeah. couch. I'm like, no. you you. I was like, I pull on my table because we're not massaging on the couch. Cause That's why I, okay, is the floor better or? Yes. Floor is better. Okay. And then and do the elbow thing, I guess. That's what you do, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Your elbow sure. and your forearm. Your forearm, your forearm right here. Yeah. It's basically where you, you know, you won't wear out because your arm is a huge forearm. <laughs> <laughs> but, um your your forearm is actually the size of a person's back. So basically you can actually okay. use it. I see that, yeah. Yeah. So you just kind of like uh, whatever, like. You know, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, uh, YouTube it and uh, you, I got you. You YouTube it. And, um, if you, if some of you want to learn, uh, the best thing I always say is YouTube Lomi Lomi. It's a Hawaiian, Spell that. um, Spell that L O M I L O M I. Okay. Uh -huh. It's called Lomi Lomi. Okay. And it will show you the differences. It's like, it's basically a Hawaiian dance massage way. It's really uh -huh. all right. Yeah, I, I guess I, I gotta do it. This my wife, she didn't want me to do the show, but this I'm doing this for her. <laughs> she, <you know. laughs> That's a good thing. You will learn. We learn something new every day. She should be happy that I'm doing this show, so then I can give her a massage afterwards. So yeah. I'm gonna look out low me low low me L O M I. Mm -hmm. and, learn how to do massages with my forearm and stuff like that because you know like there we go because i don't want to pay like what is it 80 bucks or so or she's paying like 80 or 70 and then you know and then she has to use those group coupons or whatever it is and takes it down to 50 and it's i'm like still 50 dollars you know mm -hmm, yeah it's it's 80 dollars for i'm pretty sure it's the same everywhere around but it's 80 dollars for a swedish and yeah, and for deep tissue, it's uh runs about ninety dollars to one twenty. Yeah, and uh, Lomi Lomi actually runs about two hundred fifty dollars. So yes, and they're based on Hawaii. Yeah, kind of. That, that's mm -hmm. you know everything Hawaii is expensive. You know, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I go there, and the Big Mac meal is like nine dollars, you know, or something like that. I'm like, what? You know, so mm -hmm. but okay, so. So let I mean since we're we're a money show, I mean, and you're we're talking about like 80 bucks. Uh are you okay with telling us like how much a a massage therapist make, you know? Yeah. Like per, per session, you know? Because mm -hmm. 80 bucks is a lot. Like, what is it per like an hour or something like that, right? Yes. How much is, how much do you think that goes toward um the company and how much I mean, what is it like? Are you getting paid hourly or how, how does that usually work? So um, for me, what I do is it's $80 for the hour. And then okay. I pay the therapist $20. And then what? Oh, yeah. Wow. And okay. they get, um, they basically get tips. You know, some people, they're generous. They get like $40 or $50. Uh, some people, they don't give you tips at all. I've, I've worked with Groupon. And yeah. then Groupon customers don't tip. So I've we've, <laughs> we've seen tips to where it, oh man, um, uh, I'm embarrassed. Okay, yeah. so no, no, it's uh, it's it's not like everyone, but we've seen tips where it's a dollar fifty cents. Wow. Yes. So, so you, what's so tell me what's what's I mean I don't know how to judge it. Like, what's a good tip amount? For massage person, um, I think uh, you know to be to be honest, uh, if it's a good massage, then twenty dollars yeah. is good. Uh, wow. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah. I say that because uh, they're basically working off commission, also because uh, they get paid eighty dollars for the hour, but if they're there for eight hours and they only get three customers. Then they're only getting, you know, their their sixty dollars to go. Gotcha. Yeah. So 
they're not getting paid for the hour, like staying there for eight hours and getting paid twenty dollars. But you know, yeah, it's commission based, like nail some nail tax. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So twenty dollars is is a good amount. Wow, that's still kind of steep for me. <laughs> that's a hundred bucks yeah, um, <laughs> for, for one hour, right? Yeah. If you think about it, that's you know, holy cow. I mean, not a millionaire like Sai, but that's still a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, that's twenty dollars is actually the highest tip. Some some my some my therapists they would get like fifty dollars, but that's only you know um some people who are generous enough. But the um, the minimum I would say ten dollars. Um ten dollars okay. would be something that's um you know reasonable for them. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So all right, so all right, so I'll I'll gauge it, you know, not like I get massage a lot. I don't Cause I I got those machine that does a little mm -hmm. it's a strap and then this you get a Costco and it has a little heat pad and you know because I don't want to pay a hundred bucks <laughs> but okay great so so you get twenty bucks as a you know as a man that's like twenty bucks an hour but mm -hmm. then you only go to like six hour uh, six month worth of schooling. So I think that's okay. That's about right. And then you get your tips on top of that. So that could be either like 40, you know, 40 bucks an hour. So you might be okay. You know, like you might be above average, you know? Um, I would say in a month, we probably make as much as a nail tech would make if, if it's busy. Yeah. So um, weekly, my therapist they will take home at least four hundred fifty to five hundred dollars weekly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Um. So so Kugos, I mean, what what attracts people to these massage places? Because it's like you go to Thailand, right? I go to Thailand, and like every block is like massage, 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 massage. Is it like? I, I mean. I know I need massage, but I don't need it that bad. And why is it the business like, you know, is it, is there, is it, I mean, what do you see out of it? Like what attracts people to that? Um, I think it, it, it attracts people to it because where, because, uh, let me, let me expand. Is it because they're not exercising enough or is it because they're, the health is bad and they need it or, or what is it? Um, no, it's not that. I think it's more of uh, just relaxing. Um, nowadays, the 21st century, of course, uh, I feel like a lot of youngins, a lot of um, elder people, they, they're like around 48, 50 years old. They starting to realize that, you know, working so hard and not pampering yourself uh. is, you know, you, you got to pamper yourself. Just like they say, you got to love yourself before you love others. So yeah. yeah, a lot of a lot of women who actually love to get massage because they're so stressed at home at work. Psst. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when they come, in, they just want they just want their one hour, um, you know, just zone out and pretend nothing is happening for that one hour. <laughs> yeah, that's a hundred dollars. <laughs> You know, I, I said that at first too, and I. The funny thing is, I don't. Um, I don't get massages in my my own studio. I actually go get massages from another studio because wow. my friend actually works there, and he's he's got the best mas um the best pressure. Yeah. To where I'm just like, okay, I'll just come and spend money to you. That's gotcha. fine because you know I'm fine with that. At first, I was like, oh, you know. I'm kind of tight on money, but sometimes once on a blue moon, you could spoil yourself. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, so it kind of leads to what Ku was saying. Is it, I mean, is it, do you get a lot of insurance claims? Is it because people are coming because they, they're claiming on insurance? Do you, do you see that a lot or is it just people just want to spend a hundred dollars? Um, so for my shop, uh, I don't take insurance. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of uh, OGs, they ask me like, hey, you know, do you take insurance? I have Medicaid and Medicare. I, I don't take insurance. It's all cash card. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't do it because uh, when I first started it, I was thinking about it. But mm -hmm. it's a lot of process to go through. 
it's a lot of coding and stuff like that. So I was like, you know, um, and I think it's in, in North Carolina, massage therapy is not considered something medical needed. Mm -hmm. So that's why they have it at chiropractors where they hire massage therapists because they could write it under them. And oh, gotcha. you know, when you go to chiropractors, they give you a massage, but it's like a 15 minute massage. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So they sneak it under their, under the chiropractor claim, uh, as a additional service or something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Yeah, huh. No so, insurance involved. So pretty much kind of what, uh, so you're saying is most people just, it just come because they need that pamper, you know, and man, I guess Thailand people must need that pamper because there's a lot of massage <laughs> <laughs> studios over there. <laughs> And I, I think it's um it's it's becoming bigger um because I remember when um I first started it wasn't as big, but uh, you are right because I go to Vegas and they're all over the you know all over the strip because they're like oh you know you could just sit on this Thai chair and we'll massage your legs so yeah, yeah it's uh it's it's beginning to pop up a lot so gotcha. So Lee goes, hey, great tip, you know, great tip. Lee goes, great tips on arms and elbows. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Uh, let's see here. Uh, you guys have any questions? Um, let us know. Um, let's say, Vic Victor says, how long was the course? I think, Victor, I think you meant uh, the training, right? The training was probably like, what, six months to get your, your license. That's kind of what you're saying, right? Yeah. Um, uh, Google's they're cheap. Okay. So great. So, so, so how do you market to your, your customers? I mean, does it, do they just walk in or do you, do you even market at all? Um, I actually market just a little bit. Uh, I am on Groupon and then on top of that, um, I only have a Facebook, uh, page or Instagram page. Okay. Most likely ours is word by mouth because we're right up town on the South end. So yeah. we get a lot of uh, walking traffic. And okay. So, you know, they'll just pop in by like, oh, you know, we'll never know that you're here. And, um, you know, I like to get a session. And we take walk-ins. We take appointments. So, you know, we're on that busy street where um, I really don't have to market much. Um, wow. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So we were, we did, uh, yesterday we did, uh, we did a Facebook um, ad <clears throat> video or a show and that was hard to target, you know, a particular location for business. But since you're, you know, I guess, you, you know, having a business is all about location, right? So since you already picked the best location, you didn't, you don't have to do that much marketing, right? I mean, how much people from your Facebook page actually, how much people would actually say, hey, I saw you through a Facebook page. Do you get any of that? No. Then, wow <laughs> not so at it all. is all about location then yeah everybody just be like oh we seen you on yelp or we we googled and you guys was near nearby so wow okay mm -hmm. so but 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 you're but i was comparing that to walk-ins right so so those are the people that actually like look you up but like how much are those compared to like people walking in do you get more walk-ins or do you get more um people looking for you like from services? Uh, we get more walk-ins, um, just that because, uh, you know, we're right off that North Tryon and South Tryon. And yeah. so, you know, everybody just comes through and they'll, you know, they'll come, they'll drive in yeah. and they'll just come in like, you know, can can I get a session now? Are you guys busy? I'm like, wow. oh, you know, okay. we're busy, then we'll take appointments. So there you guys go, you know, as when you create a business, uh, location is key. That's kind of what she's seeing. She doesn't, she doesn't have to do that much marketing. I mean, is it, is it consistent? Like it's a, a nice flow that comes in? Uh, yes, most likely. Um, I would say in one day we'll probably see about 15 to 20 clients. Okay. Um, it, it may not seem a lot, but 15, 20 clients in each one hour, that's a lot. Um, and then w within a week, we may see roughly about almost 600 customers. Like, no, I'm oh. sorry, not 600. No, 60 customers in a week. So. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So you're like, you open eight hours. So eight hours, you know, 
you don't do the whole full eight hours, right? It's no. Because you need time to prep too, right? Yeah. I, so how much is? I I basically we were there at nine a.m. because we prepped the night before. Yeah. And so when we're there um, at night, we're we're prepping. So I basically close at eight p.m. That's my last appointment. Yeah. Because we we close at nine, but I take my last appointment at eight, and um, go from there. So you know. So it's like 12 hours. So that's 12 hours. I mean, let's just say how, what's an, what's a good amount of client for one massage therapist? Um, I usually only let them do like three clients, three to four clients, because after the fourth client, people get worn out. Cause sometimes we're booked back to back to back. Yeah. Where they don't, they don't get to eat. Oh, okay. So I see. I get you. So that's about four clients. So that's about a good six hours or so with the work. And yeah. then you're out, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So cool. You guys got questions? Anybody got questions? Uh, oh, we lost her again. So let's see here. They're cheap. Google's they're cheap. That's why they're on Groupon. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, uh, Google's, yeah. Um, they're cheap. That's why they're on Groupons. Yeah. The only real massages I go and get is <laughs> whenever we get a Groupon. <laughs> that takes it down to like 60 or 50 or so. So, you know, that's, I mean, she's talking about 80. I'm like, dang, 80. That's a lot of Big Mac meals. So, yeah. Um, but, man, I wouldn't just walk in. We did that in Thailand. I mean, it was, but in Thailand, I think we spent like 60 bucks and I think it was like a good, two hours or or so or i don't remember but it was a long time we sat there and they scrubbed through us and everything and we did massage thing and you know <clears throat> that was great uh but it wasn't it wasn't like 80 plus the tip which is 100 that's just crazy crazy money uh for me so uh linda goes does she own a franchise We'll ask her when she jumps back in. Hopefully, she's not getting hit with that tornado right now. Oof. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, let us know where you guys are from. Curious. Um, let us know what you guys want to hear. You guys have anybody that that's a that's an entrepreneur. I love to hear and love to interview them. Um, uh, this show is about how to make money. Um, how to, you know, uh, we we'll look we like to talk to entrepreneurs, uh, but you know, <clears throat> and see how they're earning their money. Um, because we're hustlers, right? It uh, pretty much means more hustlers. So we're, we're looking for hustlers out there who actually is looking out to get, make some money uh, uh, through entrepreneurship. So <clears throat> I contacted Mike because she, she's been contacting me like because she's been keeping up with me on how I how I'm trying to get my loan from the from the SBA loan and it's I haven't got anything. You know, it's been over a month, a month and a half. So, she, you know, she just got hers like a few days ago and she said, hey, you know, just got mine, you know, but she applied way before what I did. So I'm, we're trying to gauge time frame here. And that's kind of what I'm hearing is like it does take about, you know, uh, over a month or so to get your loan. So um, if you guys have a business, uh, apply right away because it's going to take you know, a lot of time to get to it and you know you might need it because we don't know where we're heading toward with this pandemic um so um questions anybody got any questions hit me up with a question here uh we'll wait, wait for her and see if she can jump back in um but uh yeah i just wanted to see how much because i mean <clears throat> it was right because when when she told me what she did she uh my wife does a lot of massages and I was like, okay, well they make when well, they make, but we pay a lot and we see the, that amount, which is like 80, whatever it is dollars. I just want to see how much you're making or you're banking out of it. So that's, she's able to tell us. So 20 bucks. Wow. So, so there she is. She's back on. Let me go ahead and add her back in. Oh, and, sorry about that. No worries. No worries. Tough weather. Is it still, your weather is still coming down hard? No, it's um I forgot to charge my laptop. So <laughs> no worries. So 
so Linda, so I was just trying to keep them busy, but Linda asked, hey, do you own a franchise? I don't own a franchise. Okay. Mm -hmm. it's, probably, it's probably hard enough just trying to keep down, right, what you're doing right now, right? Yeah, it's um, it's pretty hard because, um, you know, we, I, I get so many people that come in or so many um, workers that come and then they leave and they come and they leave. And so I'm like, you know, handling five um, employees is hard enough to yeah. not be big enough to, you know, franchise out there. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Maybe down the road, right? Maybe down uh, the road. You know, I, I, um, I think about it, uh, opening up another one. But then now with COVID uh, going on and so much more uh, protocols that we have to follow, Mm -hmm. um, I feel like maybe I might, you know, leave the industry mm. and um, start doing what you guys are doing, you know, with realty. Um, actually, tomorrow's my last day of class. So me and my daughter, we both are looking towards getting our real real estate license in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So you're getting ready to leave the industry, right? So, you know, because, I mean, don't let it kick your butt. I mean, COVID, I mean, COVID is kicking, kicking my butt, you know, <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. I mean, that's, that's on you, but I mean, obviously you, you already made that decision because you're already studying for that test or that real estate class, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Just curious, like what made you, what made you change your mind? Um, many things, uh, you know, with the massage industry, I love it. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, I also, you know, love what I do, but with a lot going on, I feel like uh, we're just like massage therapy is like nurses, you know, where we're around elderly, we're around a lot of, um, you know, we're constantly having to wash our hands so oftenly, and I rather not risk um, being that one uh, massage place that gets everybody infected. Um, I say that because, uh, you know, just about two weeks ago, we got a notice in and it was massage therapist. Uh, she basically got COVID from her client mm. who gave her COVID. And then she, that same day, she massaged three other clients and they Ooh. all got it. So yeah. basically, um, you think about it, I, I don't know how, how, you know, bad this could get. Because they're saying we're in the first phase of it, right? And we're supposed to be looking at the second phase of it. Um, my, you know, my thoughts are, what if I'm in that situation where one of my therapists is the one to give to someone else or someone, one of the clients gave it to us. And then but we you, all get. But you made that decision to take that real estate course before or after um, that we closed down. Both, both, because uh, I also I also thought about leaving the industry because uh, my husband he's actually a electrician. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I took. Uh, he's been sick, so I told him I was like, you know, um, with him being recovering, I was like, we we can't work for a family no more. Mm. I was like, I, me and my my daughter, we're gonna go and get our real estate license and start, you know, getting flipping homes. And so mm -hmm. that we can pull him out of the family business. Mm -hmm. I mean, family business is, is awesome. Don't get me wrong. But uh, I feel like it's time for us to move on. Because they were like our stepping stool. So mm -hmm. I told him it's time for us to move on and uh, do something bigger for our family. Because we, mm -hmm. we still got some young ones. And I wanted, I wanted him to, you know, do something else with his electrician. Because he's got a graphics designing degree sitting there. He's got <laughs> and he's an electrician. <laughs> Man, he's got to keep one hat at this point. Yeah, and he's got right? an electrician sitting there. Uh, he knows how to fix laundromats. Is sitting there. I'm yeah. like, you know, I got a handyman who's just sitting there. So I was like, you know, if we can start this and start flipping homes in North Carolina, then, um, you know, I'll get out of my industry. I'll sacrifice what I can just yeah. to, you know, make everybody better. So. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, 
I mean, you may be on to something because, you know, you're already thinking ahead of time with that, you know, loan thing. And now you're kind of thinking ahead of time where this, you know, industry, this real estate industry might be might be coming down and might be coming back up when it comes when it comes down. That might be you you might have an advantage to to sell. Right. Because everybody's trying to get out. And then when it's on the rise up, you might have that advantage, too. So I don't know. I mean, nobody knows. Nobody has a crystal ball, but. You know, you got something there. I mean, uh, kudos to you for thinking ahead. I mm -hmm. mean, I mean, worst case scenario, um, I could just keep my my, uh, yeah. my shop and do that at the same time. Yeah, and you know, hopefully somebody just be nice enough to buy my shop, and I'll be happy to. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough right now. <laughs> yes. All right. So, uh, I mean that. Kind of, I mean, concludes the show. Unless you got, got any questions, I mean, um, that's all we wanted to hear. I wanted to hear, like, how does a massage uh, studio make their money? And, I mean, there's no inventory, right? You're not buying any inventory. I mean, you got the tables and stuff. I mean, uh, are those tables expensive? Um, those tables can cost anywhere from, um, if you want good ones, it could cost anywhere from $100 to $300. Oh, that's it. Yeah. You know? um, yeah. So then, and then you need a place to rent, which is like you're renting, a, you know, you're paying rent to whatever for that mm -hmm. place. Yeah. Electricity and you need, you, do you use that much water? Um, I actually use a lot of water because we do have a shower. Uh, we, okay. We provide a shower because sometimes we get construction workers. Yeah. And, you know, I've, been there where it's construction workers and you're like you know holding your breath throughout the whole hour so i'm like you know i told my husband i was like we, we need to get a shower so we do have a shower stand-up shower um there is inventory though you know lotion oil um since my shop is called candlelight studio i basically um have candles in my rooms and when you walk in it's basically lit up with all the candles Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I basically, uh, I spend on candles alone for every two months is about $500. Oh, wow. Yes. So it's kind of like a, I can just imagine like I'm walking into like a dark room with all these candles. Like I'm like being worship. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how I see it. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's how it is. Give us a picture. I like to see how it looks like one day. <laughs> yes, I definitely will send you a picture. Yes. Uh, all right. Let's. I mean, I'm sure some people are going to ask about this particular topic. Happy endings. A lot of people ask me. Oh my god! I tell you, like, is it like a joke? They joke about it. Are they serious? Are they going to be like, you know, um, I've I've uh, I've been on a Moan radio show with our one of my pastors and. One of the guys asked me, he was like, oh, yeah, you know, I've um, I've gone to a massage place and they got the most beautiful girls like you can never imagine. And my mind stuck to it already. My mind was like, I told him, I was like, see, we, we don't do that kind of stuff. A lot of people, they, they think massage therapists do happy endings, which um, is masseuses. They call them masseuses because that's what one or <laughs> I think, I think, um, uh, what's it called? Um, the madame. So I'm not okay. a madame. <laughs> no clue what that is either. Yeah, but... they call it a madame or a masseuse. So that's a big difference. Um, well, I, when, I guess what I'm saying is, when how I, often do people, oh. I guess what I'm saying is, how far do you, I mean, I, let's say in a week, do you get people going, you do that stuff? We get a lot of, People and a, a lot of those people are the old, old, old men. I'm talking about like 60 year old men who look at us. And you know, um, my male therapist, he's actually seen it from the old ladies too. <laughs> so he's just like, no, no, you know, just just yeah. keep it going. Um, it's, but what's the percentage? I mean, I like to hear. I mean, what's the percentage? I mean, um, in a week, you'll probably get a one or two saying, "Hey," and be like, "No, we don't do that." Cause is that is that? What's, yeah. It's about a 10%. Not, wow. Yes, it's about a 10%. Um, you even have, we even have people who call us and like, wow. do you provide full service? Or yeah. do you provide um, 
the ending part and we're like, um, what ending part, you know? And so uh, when it comes to that question, um, that's why I don't, I almost don't expose to more people that own a massage shop because first thing comes to their mind, uh, brothel or first time comes to their mind, like, Oh, you know, you do yeah. that. You're, you're in that industry, but which, you know, I always, that's why I always tell them like a massage studio mm-hmm. and, um, you know, you try to keep it as straightforward as possible. And, you know, we, we, when we get those and they don't tend to cooperate with us, we can just say, okay, we're ending the session, but we're not returning your money. Oh, wow. So you cut it off. So yes, if you're in the middle of a session and somebody, if you guys don't want to lose your, your money, or you, <laughs> you want to keep that massage, don't ask that question. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most likely. And, and, you know, it's, um, we we may think that it's it's something that it's um funny or something that a lot of people think about but really it's not because in the massage industry we get undercovers all the time we get con- undercovers who come in and tries it because mm-hmm. that's how they revoke our license that's how they take our way away our licenses um so we i always tell them like be as careful as possible you know you're not supposed to do that stuff and we cover them like a cocoon. So, you know, that's the best way we can do, you know. Yeah. There's nothing that, you know, you can say or you cannot say about it. You know, that's yeah. that's the norm out there in the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Don't do that kind of stuff. Um, and that's it, man. That's all I got for you. Man, appreciate you coming on the show. Um, how do people get a hold of you? Um, they can always... Um, I have Facebook, uh, or they can always look me up on I'll Instagram. Tag, I'll, I'll tag your name uh, on the video and then uh, Candlelight Studios, right? That's your Facebook page. Yes, or uh, um, that's that's yeah, that's the fan, uh, Facebook page. I think it's Candlelight Studio Relaxation. Relaxation. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'll I'll look it up and I'll tag it on the the the, the show um, notes. So. Uh, if you guys in, in if you guys are in North Carolina, uh, in the Charlotte area, come get a massage from her. Yes. You know? And if you say <laughs> that you um you know heard my interview here and you want to come in, I'll give you a thirty minute free session. So wow, thirty yes. minutes. Huh? Thirty that's, minutes. Thirty minutes is a long time. That's it will fifty dollars. That's yes. fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's a lot of Big Mac meals, you know. So. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Um, so yeah, I'll tag I'll tag your page on there, uh, guys. You know, she's she's awesome. You know, and um, hope your business goes well. Hope I mean I, I know you lost that loan. Are you gonna pursue it or? Um, I can. You know, I I'm thinking about it, uh, pursuing it. Just writing a letter in to see what they say. If not, it's okay. It's you know, it's um, a debt that I won't owe. <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's one thing i was like it's a debt that i won't owe and um you know more more better stuff to come you know for 2020 so all right so good luck to you uh thanks for coming to the show we have one last segment on the show is you know uh that we ask all our all the guests that comes on there and is that you know if i was to give you one billion (laughs) dollars you know what was the first two things you would be doing with it? Um, I would probably buy myself a lot of land in North oh, Carolina. Okay. Uh, and then I'll probably put the rest away into investing. Okay. Investing for Hmong people so that, you know, I know a lot of Hmong people have, um, you know, with what happened in uh, recession in 20, 2008, a lot of people fell down that time. Yeah. So I would love to invest and, you know, help them out and go from there. Right. And the reason why you say land is, I mean, I don't know if, I mean, North Carolina has awesome land. Is that, is that why? Um, you might think I'm crazy, but I, I want to buy a lot of land and I want to like maybe build like a homes and sell them. <laughs> so she, okay so you're gonna you're gonna try to flip that money you know to make more money anyway so that's the whole purpose of it right yes. not buying land for yourself but you know to make more money with that land yes right mm-hmm. awesome. awesome 
Dude, that's it, man. That's the end of the show. She's an entrepreneur, guys. I mean, I thought she was going to use that land for herself, but she's going to flip those land to like <laughs> build stuff on there and make more money out of it. So that's 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 great. So, um, hey, thanks for thanks for coming on the show. And, Thank you for um, having me. Appreciate all that information. I'm sure uh, you know people, most people who if they want to do massage, you know, this is this should be great and full content for them as well. So, all right, those you guys. Uh, Keep hustling. All right. You know. All right, guys. Have a good night. Okay. Good night. Bye. Good night, guys.